avoid responding to that right now. To the five minutes? No, <laughs> forget it. Well, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Thank you for ranking member. Thank you for this hearing. Thank you for the panelists. And uh, Governor, it's delightful to see you. I'm, you're triggering fond memories of a field trip that we took to the Bay Area when you were in the committee. And I don't know if the chair remembers our conversation on a waiting for a ride on a street corner in San Francisco, but we'll leave that for another venue. Um, Governor Polis, I want to talk about just following up on the questions about outcomes as a former employer, um, some of the comments about making sure that we're getting people trained um, for the workforce and transparency and data collection. So we have some support for the Transparency um, Higher Education Act so that we make sure that the data is collected and we have that to prove the outcomes. I wonder if you have any comments on that. Um, I think the next kind of iteration and, and generation in, in outcomes, of course, uh, traditional measurements, uh, job placement, loan repayment rates are, are very helpful and constructive. Uh, I think the next generation will be looking at return on investment and ROI and seeing how you can maximize the ROI from both time and dollars in terms of increased earning potential uh, from the beneficiary. Okay. And I want to ask you some questions on a different subject matter that you've touched on specifically about ESSER funding and ARP and the requirements, the 5% and the 1% that we hold back. Now we know in states like California where I'm from, we did a lot of work. I led a bicameral bipartisan task force on intercession um, and summer learning loss and nutritional loss around the state. And we've worked with, on a bipartisan level, to make sure that we extended the school year in California and other states have like Colorado. And we've also provided more year round after school programs uh, again, it was a big issue for Governor Schwarzenegger. And now in California, we have free and reduced lunches with high nutritional standards year round that the state pays for largely. So I wonder if you could talk about, we were prepared in a way, not for the level of the pandemic, but we, were, we already knew about what we would lose when the kids weren't in the classroom. So there are other, are other options within the system that we're working on that increases performance, particularly for disadvantaged communities You've demonstrated leadership in your state on this issue. Um, it doesn't have to be all about the COVID experience. We've learned lessons and the, the model has changed. So the social model, two income households, kids out of school with more time alone. Maybe you could address your experience in Colorado with positive outcomes. First, it's very important to highlight that uh, these types of innovations that uh, California has undertaken, that Colorado, as the many states have, would not have been possible without the American Rescues Act, without ESSER. Uh, that's what really empowered states to be able to say, let's increase learning time, uh, which is a very data-driven intervention. Uh, and that's probably the single biggest utilization of funds, different ways of increasing learning time. It could be after school, summer programs, longer school year. Uh, these all take resources and take investment. Uh, the revenue, of course, from our school districts was static to some even, of course, down during the midst of the pandemic. So uh, really, these types of proven data-driven interventions that we know will improve student achievement would not have been possible without congressional action, that we're very grateful there. Now, that's the biggest bulk of it. On top of that, deployment of resources to address mental health challenges of students to make sure they're ready to learn. We talked about the nutritional element as well, housing security, a number of other social determinants of successful educational outcomes. But the single biggest is is just a very traditional time on task, data driven, it works, spending quality time, learning math, learning reading, helps the students get there. I appreciate that. And I would look forward to, we, got, we were able to get a bill that I was the author of out of the House Mental Health Matters Act. Uh, the chairman and I have had discussions about this when she was the ranking member. I look forward to engaging my colleagues on the other side on what we do about developing a workforce around mental health, particularly for young people. And um, yeah, I just really appreciate the comments. Madam Chair, I always look forward to positive reinforcement for you, so I'm gonna yield back with 40 seconds left. Another gold star.